Hey gamers, it's Kaywing here, and Ninja Gaiden has finally returned to a Nintendo console. As an original fan of the series, I'm bursting at the seams. Not quite like this guy though. In case you didn't know, nine months ago, Team Ninja released one of the worst games of the last decade for the PS3 and the Xbox 360. Look, I don't have to tell you how bad that game was. Rather than improving upon what made fans rejoice over Ninja Gaiden 2, they watered it down, well actually, they drowned it. Until now, that is. Enter the Nintendo Wii U. All of what made the series a success is back in brutal, gruesome full force. Not only is Dismemberment back, but this time around it was actually built into the engine itself. These aren't just finishing moves, it can happen anytime you swing your blade. No, I'm serious. Heads, arms, whatever is going to go flying literally everywhere. The story for this game is. Nah, nothing's really changed. It's the same song over again. Not as cool as my clan was wiped out and I must get vengeance for them. Or my father was killed in a duel and I have to avenge him. It's, oh, my hand's been possessed by the dragon sword and I have to murder thousands in order to break the curse. <laughs> anyway, on the gameplay front, Razor's Edge is like an entirely new game though. Now, Ninja Gaiden 3 features four difficulties with one being unlocked. Hero is for casual players, normal is your standard Ninja Gaiden experience, and hard means, well, you're insane. The other difficulty I'm not even going to talk about. Now, the U-pad itself does feature some touch abilities like using Ninpo arts and switching weapons. It's just not ideal for Razor's Edge, but it would have fit in fine with the previous version. For this game, you'll need to master the sword or die by it. Though one thing is certain, you're going to die anyway, and die, and die, and die some more. So get used to it. This game isn't going to hold your hand, folks. It's going to slice it off. All joking aside, though, controls are fast, furious, and fun. Players attack with the Y and X buttons, and the X is actually used for finishing moves and some of the quick time events. The top buttons will be used for long-range weapons such as the bow and sliding and guarding. Using the directional pad will switch between reuse multiple weapons, and each one will change combat drastically. Which, by the way, in order to learn more techniques, you'll need to unlock them by using karma points that you earn from slain enemies. The Ninpo arts have also been upgraded for this game, which you can mess around in the skill tree. Fans' cries of how easy Ninja Gaiden 3 was now sound like distant echoes. Because not only has the enemy AI been given steroids, but they will stop at nothing to kill you, even forsaking their own lives. Which brings me to my first issue with this game. Suicidal thugs, you know I hate them. Since the AI is cranked up way high, this annoying feature will actually decrease the game's happy balance. Why? Because the game was already Demon Souls difficult, and now, well, I have no way to reference my distaste. See, when one or two of these punks actually latch onto you, it's game over, man. Now, this was a feature not in the other Ninja Gaiden games, so this is new, and it's dumb. Boss battles are also a hair puller now, too. Before, they weren't pushovers by any means, but now they're nearly invincible. Good example of this is the Spider Mecha Boss thing has a new move, and it's a flamethrower. Yep, let's give the first boss a flamethrower. Another thing that bugged me about this game is when fighting the helicopters, how come the rockets only hurt me? I mean, is there something I don't know about these thugs? Are they like magical or something? Lastly, is it just me or do the graphics look a little bit muddy compared to the other versions? But then again, this all could be due to all the extra gore being splashed everywhere in this game, which wasn't in the original Ninja Gaiden 3. But I digress, this game has way more good qualities than bad. One of the fans' key biggest issues of Ninja Gaiden 3 was Ryu murdering unarmed adversaries. This was totally out of character and ticked off a lot of fans. Thankfully, it's been removed and Ryu's honor has once again been restored. That and remember those long, tedious, boring cutscenes involving Ryu holding his arm in pain? Well, they've been replaced with these stages where you're transported to another dimension and must take out all your foes or die in the void since your health steadily decreases. Also, another cool addition is collecting scarabs and finding the 10 crystal skulls. Aside from playing solo, you can play in various online modes too, such as being able to play as a generic ninja in the clan battles, where eight players face off in teams to the death. This is actually pretty fun, and you can even assassinate your fellow teammates by accident. Yeah, that's it. Though, good luck finding people to play with in this game. It took me a while to find people and I had to announce it. Also, while the Ninja Trials can be played co-op, they can also be played solo as well. 
Playing online though is the only way to build karma points for your unknown ninja in order to upgrade him. Combat in this game is so awesome and fluid though. Once again, fast paced and intense challenges are central to your Ninja Gaiden experience. This game is nothing short of a commitment though and you will need to increase your skills in order to survive Ryu's latest nightmare. Long range weapons weren't too shabby either, switching back and forth from the sword to the bow didn't feel sluggish at all. Personally, my favorite character to play as was definitely Ayani though. She is wicked fast and has exploding kunai too. Before I forget, this is also another great Wii U game that allows for off TV play and looks great on the U gamepad. I know what you're all thinking, this game sounds pretty cool, but does it have any lasting appeal? And the answer is, you bet it does. After beating the game, players unlock extra costumes and a chapter challenge where either Ryu, Ayane, and other DLC characters can replay any day they wish. Another great aspect of this game is the six weapons Ryu can use at any time during a fight. Like my personal favorite and Wii U weapon exclusive, the Chinese Lunar Staff. Yeah baby. In conclusion, Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge is the definitive Ninja Gaiden 3 game, period. It cuts down on a lot of repetition by keeping players on their toes constantly just like the old games. If you've played Ninja Gaiden 3 and were really disappointed, Razor's Edge sets the record straight and truly delivers a game worthy of the title, Ninja Gaiden 3. And with that, thus ends another K-Wing video review. If this Wii U review was helpful, hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If it wasn't, well, let me know why. Thanks so much for watching another one of my reviews, and until we meet again gamers, God bless and happy gaming. I'll be seeing you.